In the previous lesson, we looked at repetition structures in general and saw that a repetition structure allows a block of code to be executed multiple times based on some condition. And in that previous lesson, we specifically looked at the while repetition in which our condition is represented by a Boolean expression and we used while and ran a block of code within that while block. And then provided some means for that Boolean to eventually become false so we don't have an endless loop. In this lesson, we want to focus in on another type of loop. In this lesson, we want to focus on another type of repetition structure, which is a for loop. And here we're going to execute a loop a certain number of times as long as a variable is in a certain range. And that variable is going to automatically change in that range. We don't need to provide a way out of having the Boolean become false. So here's our structure for the for loop. We use the word for, have some variable, which in essence becomes a counter of some sort, in a certain range. And then the block of code we want to have repeat. Now that range typically might be a number in which we'd have an inclusive start number, an integer, an exclusive end value, and then each time through the loop, it's going to increment that start value by one until it reaches the end value. We can also provide a step option. Maybe we want to go just even numbers. We can go from zero to 11, 11 being exclusive. So we're only going from zero to 10, but we're going to step by two. And so our loop is going to go while x equals, or while, while our variable equals 0, 2, 4, 8, and 10. We might want to step backwards. We want to go from 10 to 0 and do a step of a minus 1. And that's going to take our loop going from 10 to 1. So here's an example. Count we saw in the previous video where we used a while loop. We're going to print the beginning of the loop. We're going to have our loop, in this case a for loop. It's going to go from 1 to 11. 11 being exclusive, so it's going to go from 1 to 10. We're going to print x and say the loop is finished. Now, there are several variations of this. If I just put a number in the range, it's going to go from 0 to that number with that number being exclusive. So range 11 would go from 0 to 10. That would be the value of a. We could do abc in range from 10 to 0 minus 1, one I mentioned earlier. Here we're going to step backwards, going from 10 down to 1. ABC in range 2, comma 11, comma 2. Here we're going to step by 2, starting with 2, and 11 being exclusive. So X, actually in this case it should be ABC. ABC in this range is going to go from 2 to 4 to 6 to 8 to 10. And for B, we have a list. Now we're talking about list in a couple weeks, but a list is simply a, a list of values, comma separated inside of square brackets. And again, I'm going to fix my comment here. So it says for B in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, just as we did before with ABC going from 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, this is another way of writing it. If we want to do a lot of numbers, we'd probably want to use the range. If it's a short number of values, then a range, a list works great. I can also have a list though of strings. So here for C in SMCC, ASU, NAU, and in this case C is going to go from SMCC to ASU to NAU, and we could actually print out those strings. I can create a list ahead of time. So classes equals, have my string values comma separated inside square brackets, and then I can simply specify that list for XYZ in classes. And here, XYZ is going to go from English 101 to Math 142 to COM 100 to History 215. Well, let's jump over to uh, our idle editor in Python and play around with this. Oftentimes, uh, you can choose either to use a for loop or a while loop, especially when you want have a sequence of things you want to do, um, such as counting from 1 to 10. In our previous video, we created a while loop where we went from the values of 1 to 10 while x was less than 11. And I'm just going to show you, you can change this for x in, and our range will be 1, 11. I'm going to get rid of this x equals. I don't need that anymore. And I'll get rid of our incremental statement. 
I'm gonna do the same thing where we're summing this. So again, I no longer need x. I'm gonna use the same statement for x in range of one through 11, and 11 is exclusive. We're gonna print x, we're gonna get a sum, and we're gonna get rid of that incremental value. So in this particular case, the for loop is actually a little bit simpler than the while loop, but let's run this and see if it works. So I've got my colon, so I'm going to put my colon in both of these. And let's run this again. So we see the loop counting from 1 to 10. And then our second loop doing the same thing. Oh, we didn't get our print statement. So I need to add my statement here of print sum is. And we'll format the value of sum. Let's run this again. And there we go. I gave him the sum is 55 now in that second loop. So let's look at some of the variations of this. And what I'm going to do is just simply copy my first loop. In my range on this one, I'm going to go from 2 to 21, but I'm going to step by 2. I'm going to add a line up here, give myself a couple blank lines. And I'm going to copy this statement again. Let's, we'll do a countdown on this one. So we'll do 10, 1, comma, minus 1. Let's just run this, save my changes. And so it ran all four loops. On that third loop, it's going by twos from 2 to 20. And then on the next one, we're going backwards from 10 to 1. Now I didn't get the 1. I probably should have made this a 0 to get the 1. So I'll just to demonstrate that, I'm going to run that again. And here we go, 10 to 1, until the loop is finished. So we mentioned being able to use a loop in a list. So I'm going to replace range with a list. We'll do 3, comma, 8, um, 9, comma, 12, and 41. I'm going to close my list with a square bracket. And let's run that loop. So here we're getting 3, 8, 9, 12, 41. I'm going to copy that and paste. And this time, let's do some strings. Alan, Bob, Cindy, Della, and Earl. We'll run that. And I get those five names printed each time through the loop, taking another name in that list. And as we mentioned, we can create a list. So we can create um, x equals smcc asu u of a nau and GCU. And then I can simply say, uh, actually I need to name this something other than X, so let's make this um, campus. And we'll use X in campus. And let's run that. Let's have a square bracket here, I just knows, and get rid of that. And run, save our changes. And there is our last loop. We get SMCC, ASU, U of A, NAU, and GCU. And that is how for loops work.